The new MacBook Air is one of Apple's most important computers since Steve Jobs pulled the original Air out of an envelope. It shows what's possible when Apple built an entire machine around its mobile hardware, specifically its mobile chips, rather than just sticking those chips in an old case, like they did with the MacBook Pro 13. It's impressively thin and light, but it also has a bigger and better screen, a great pair of speakers, and it even has a nifty MagSafe power adapter. And thanks to Apple's M2 chip, it's also far speedier than the last model, which I called stunningly fast just a year and a half ago. Once again, Apple has set a new standard for ultra portables. Before I dive into what's under the hood, I'll just say what we're all thinking. This is one gorgeous computer. The Air's trademark wedge design is gone. Now it's uniformly flat from front to back. Apple basically recreated the PowerBook-esque design of the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro. That means more rounded edges, a notch for the webcam, and squished it into a case that measures just 11.3 millimeters thin and weighs 2.7 pounds. While it's only a 10th of a pound lighter than the last Air, it's just more balanced, which makes it a lot easier to hold. When I picked up the MacBook Air for the first time, it honestly felt like I was picking up an iPad with a keyboard attached to it. And what's funny is that it's actually more portable than the 12.9 inch iPad Pro with its smart keyboard attached. Together, those things weigh about three pounds, which is the same as the 13 inch MacBook Pro. The iPad Pro has always been positioned as the future of portable computing for Apple, but it was heavier than the last MacBook Air. And once again, that's true. And this Air is just much more compelling as a computer. It's also nice to see Apple offer a variety of other finishes. In addition to the silver and space gray, which we typically see, there's also a brighter starlight option and a really dark, pretty much black midnight option. I've been testing a starlight model and just the way the color pops off of the aluminum gives me a bit of joy. And to be honest, I'm getting a sense of joy and delight just about everywhere I look in MacBook Air, especially in the 13.6 inch liquid retina display. Now it's only a third of an inch bigger than the last model, but it feels more engrossing, more expansive. Now there are a lot of reasons it feels like that. Apple shaved off some of the bezels, so you're just more focused on the screen. And it bumped up the brightness to 500 nits, so you can actually use it outside pretty clearly in bright sunlight. For the most part, the Liquid Retina screen is about on par with what we saw on the 14 inch and 16 inch MacBook Pro, except it doesn't have ProMotion. Now, on a productivity machine like this, which is, you know, more directed at mainstream users, I wasn't really expecting high refresh rate technology, but I'll just admit it's the one thing that's kind of keeping this laptop from being truly perfect to me. Maybe I'm just being a bit greedy, but my eyes have been spoiled by all of Apple's other promotion hardware, so, you know, I just want silky smooth refresh rates on all of my screens. I was also a bit disappointed by the new 1080p webcam. It packs in more pixels than the previous 720p cameras, but it still looks pretty drab and grainy. At least Apple managed to bring over the improved speaker technology from its bigger MacBook Pros. The Air has a quad speaker setup, which sounds surprisingly great for a machine that's this thin. It can fill a room with sound without getting distorted, and that's a huge accomplishment, to be honest. There's also a three mic array to improve video chat sound, and of course, there's a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Now I'm sure there's a fanatical Apple designer out there who wants to yank the headphone jack out entirely like they did with the iPad Pros. So, you know folks, enjoy it while it lasts. All of these upgrades would be impressive on their own, but what really makes the MacBook Air shine is Apple's new M2 chip. It doesn't really transform the PC world like the M1 did, but it's a pretty decent sequel. The M2 features eight CPU cores and up to 10 GPU cores, and Apple says it's around 18% faster for multi-threaded performance. If you go for the faster GPU model, you can expect graphic speeds about 35% faster than the M1. Apple also doubled the memory bandwidth and increased the RAM capacity up to 24 gigabytes. That's probably a little overkill for a machine like this, but you know, it's nice to have. There's also hardware decoding and encoding for ProRes video, but again, that's something that I think Pro users will be more interested in, you know, people using the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros. Our review unit was equipped with a 10 core GPU, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and a one terabyte SSD. The same as our 13 inch MacBook Pro tester. And just as I expected, the scores between both systems were nearly identical across benchmarks like Geekbench 5 and 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme. There was a pretty significant difference in Cinebench's R21 multi-threaded test. You know, it was about 1500 points, but that wasn't really a surprise. The MacBook Air is a fanless system, so its CPU has to be throttled down if it gets too hot. The MacBook Pro, on the other hand, has fans and a whole active cooling setup, so it is much better at handling heat. That makes it better for sustained workloads. 
All of my testing made it clear that the MacBook Air is pretty much as fast as the MacBook Pro 13 inch for most tasks. It even managed to reach around 30 FPS and shadow the Tomb Raider's benchmark, which means you could actually play this game on an ultra portable. That's pretty impressive. The only thing is that you'll have to live with a bit of slowdown if you're doing more complex work like video editing or 3D rendering, or if you're playing a game for a very long time. That is the trade-off you're making for a family system. But honestly, for most people, I think given everything else the Air offers, that's a pretty decent trade-off. This thing will still be fast enough when you occasionally have to edit a video or, you know, pop in a family video or something. And if you're an actual media professional of some kind or just somebody who needs more power, you're still better off with the bigger 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros instead of that aging 13 inch model. Not to knock on that computer too much, but you know, after seeing the Air in action, I'm even more baffled by the 13 inch MacBook Pro. The Air has the same great keyboard and super smooth trackpad. It even has more ports, technically. It has two USB-C ports like the MacBook Pro 13 inch, but there's also a MagSafe power port. That means you can actually charge this computer without using up one of your precious USB-C connections. That's a great thing, especially for people doing a lot of professional work. Maybe Apple should have just renamed this the MacBook Air Pro. The 13 inch MacBook Pro does have a larger battery, so it does have that advantage. That lasted around 17 hours and five minutes in our benchmark. The Air on the other hand lasts about 16 hours and 30 minutes, which is almost exactly the same as what we saw with the last MacBook Air. I don't think that's a huge difference and you know, it's still enough power to last you a whole day of work and beyond. And it's also on par with what we're seeing with other laptops like the XPS 13, which is kind of in the same size range. Apple also has a variety of power adapters to choose from. In addition to the standard one with a single port, there's also a dual USB-C connection so you can actually charge two devices at once. And there's also a 67 watt power adapter option for fast charging. That'll just get you juiced up much faster than before. The one downside to the MacBook Air's revamp is that it now starts at $1199, $200 more than the M1 model. The older machine is still a decent option if you find it on sale or refurbished, but otherwise I'd say the M2 model is absolutely worth the extra cost. Just be prepared for the price rise quickly as you start adding extra hardware. If you wanted to bump up to our review unit specs, you'd have to pay $1,899. Personally, I'd say prioritize throwing in as much RAM and SSD storage as you can. The M2 chip will still be very capable without the $100 upgrade for the more powerful GPU. This is the new MacBook Air and you can get a feel for how thin it is. It's remarkable how far the MacBook Air has come since 2008. It used to be overpriced and underpowered, kind of a testament to Apple's trend towards style over substance. But since then, the entire PC industry has jumped aboard the ultra portable bandwagon, and Apple has figured out a way to bring in a ton of power into those razor thin cases. Now the MacBook Air is practically Apple's most perfect laptop yet. Stay tuned to Engadget.com for more of our laptop reviews, and if you dug this video, please be sure to like and subscribe.